Hi guys and welcome back to Hilltop Farm and welcome to part three in our Across the Duck Pond series uh, about successfully hatching duck eggs. Okay, now I didn't, uh, I know last time was quite a while ago, uh, we'd done the um, candling uh, and we'd eliminated two of our ten eggs, we had eight left. Um, I didn't see any point in doing any other videos until this point um, because it was just same old, same old. So those of you that are following this, um, basically what you do is what I said in the last video, um, continue on playing mother duck. And those of you that don't know what I mean by that, um, you want to watch the first two parts of this series and you will understand. Um, so anyway, we have hit, if you look on the front of our incubator, down here. I told you before that this incubator is a bit quirky. It, it doesn't say day 25, which for ducks is when they go into lockdown. It doesn't say day 25 until day 25 is actually completed. Um, for example, when you first turn it on, it's, it shows zero for the first 24 hours. So the fact that it says 24 on the front means that it's completed 24 days and it's currently in its 25th day. If you wait till that says 25, you'll actually be on day 26. So go figure. But anyway, duck eggs day 25 is the lockdown time. I tend not to do it um, very first thing on day 25, I tend to do it later. Um, as I say, this is not telling you um, from any scientific point of view what is right and wrong. This is what, through a lot of trial and error, we have discovered works here at Hilltop. But if it helps you, great. If you're having trouble like we were, try this uh, and then modify it to suit suit you if it doesn't quite work but this is what's been working for us so late on day 25 so what we've done here is we have um, maintained our humidity uh, we've hovered it really around uh, 60 61 62 sort of in that vicinity I like it I don't let it go below 55 I like it to um, really be 60 to 65 but sort of 60 is sort of optimal really um, but what uh, what I've discovered is um, keeping them in the same room does help avoid disasters it I can't I can't express this enough we used to have them locked in another room and if something goes wrong I know you've got your alarms that go off if things go wrong but you can't you don't always hear those and sometimes um, what's going wrong is a subtle something going wrong like for example this particular incubator the alarm does not go off if the humidity drops unless it goes it's got to be something like uh, 45 or less um, that's no good for me um, even for chicken eggs that's 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 too it's not you know and I know you can adjust it um, but it's too much fiddling around for me. I can't be bothered reading the manual, working out how to do it, and have I done it right? And no, no, no. It's just set up as is, and yeah, I just do. I do it my way. Now, we had a situation part way through where they'd had their morning uh, turn, and we we'd been out oh, know, planting seeds or doing something came back to have a cup of coffee after a couple of hours and I'm sitting looking at it across the room and suddenly thought the humidity is down on about 53, 54 which is most unusual. So we have a closer inspection and although everything appeared to be right the lid was slightly not on at the back 
and it was just enough to make a difference. The second we realised and clicked it into place, you literally could see the humidity going up, um, you know, 54, 55, 56. So, but we might it might have been a long time before we noticed that if we had an automatic turner and we were leaving it to its own devices it could be 24 hours um, and that's 24 hours with the humidity far too low so that's why I do it this way now we've filled up the reservoir to the absolute maximum to increase our humidity we've put a second dish in the front okay and as you can see our humidity is um, rising from normal now what I'm also going to do is I'm going to take these out okay I will give them all I'll pop it there can you can you see now I'm going to give them all a final turn. And this happens to us all the time. We're on our final, like we're putting them into lockdown, giving them their final turn. Can you see that? There's a pip already in that egg. Okay. Now the ones I've already turned, I'll just recheck. But this is not unusual. Yes, when they go into lockdown, usually within um, 20, like you check them 24 hours later and there's multiple ones started pipping. Now, next thing I do is I get my, my water sprayer. And I start spraying. Now, I'm very, very thorough with this. Normally, as I say, a light mist is what I do twice a day. I told you that at the beginning. When they go into lockdown, I'm really quite thorough. Um, especially in between or where there's a patch where there's no eggs, I really like to soak those wood shavings. It really helps the humidity come up. Now, I know after lockdown, you're not supposed to touch them. Hello. They're calling to me. Can you hear? I hope that sound comes out when I play the um, the recording back. But anyway, I thoroughly soak the wood shavings, right? And as I say, I know you're not supposed to take them out once they're in lockdown. And I I don't with chicken eggs. Um, chicken eggs, I periodically put my hand in quickly whip out the ones that are hatched uh, and they go into our old incubator over there which I've got set on I think it's about oh, 36 35 something um, Celsius um, and it just basically keeps them warm while they dry off um, but it's slightly cooler than this one uh -huh. um, now, I know when they say when you take them out and they're pipping, the membrane can shrink, sort of like shrimp wrap um, the baby. This is true. This is true.
but what I do is when I get it out, first thing I do is quickly spray it. Okay, and that prevents that happening. I don't leave it out for hours on end. Like now, with that one pipping, I'm gonna put it back. Um, okay, that'll just beep for a second while it comes back up to temperature. Um, but um, that one there, uh, as I say, it won't shrink wrap if every time you open it, you spray it. Um, and the reason you might sort of think, oh, okay, why is, it, why is it pipping now? You've got to remember that this incubator will probably click over to day 25 in about two hours time. So in about two hours time, this will hit this will start the beginning of its day 26, right? Um, duck eggs, when they pip, they very rarely hatch um, in less than 24 hours. Once they pip, it's usually 24 to 48 hours before they hatch. So it's not at all unusual on day 26 and 27 for pretty much all of them to hatch. That's quite... Uh, to pip rather, that's quite common. Um, and some people sort of panic and think, oh, you know, it's day 25, 26, it, it, it's hatching. It shouldn't be, it's not hatching, it's pipping. It's part of its development. It's just reached the point where it can't get enough oxygen through the blood supply that's you know, get, gaining oxygen just through the pores of the egg. It's reached the point where its lungs are developed, it needs to draw air. It started doing that in um, the air sac inside the egg, but when that's not enough, it breaks a hole. Um, having broken the hole, it can then breathe, and it's breathing oxygen on its own into its lungs, but it might stay like that for 48 hours and not do a thing. Okay, so don't panic and I think this is one of the reasons why they recommend that you don't open it up and look at it um, I think they just want to scare people because they think um, if people see that they're pipped all that time and nothing's happening they'll panic and try to hatch them out um, just let nature take its course um, keep an eye on them check on them I check on them three or four times a day once they're pipped I just take the tray out for 30 seconds but as soon as I get it out I spray it with the water to stop that drying effect and that way I can keep track of who's pipping uh, and once they do start zipping I can then keep track of their progress um, and yeah and that's what we do. Uh, incubator will register very soon that it's started uh, that it's completed day 25 so hence it will start day 26 uh, as you can see, the humidity is on its way up. It's up to 72, which is what you want. You want it over 70 for the hatching time. Um, and now you just sit back and wait. Um, as I say, we have an old incubator, which you can possibly see just there. See that next to it, and that is that. That particular incubator is hopeless. From the time we got it, it was hopeless. It it can't maintain its temperature. It, it fluctuates by one or two degrees all over the place. It, it's just a general pain in the neck. Um, but it's absolutely brilliant um, to have when they're first born and you want them to dry out without trampling over the other eggs. Um, it also in the past has acted as a, sort of a humidity crib for uh, reviving uh, rabbits, bay newborn rabbits and it even has had newborn puppies in it that uh, are a bit cold and a bit tired and are struggling 
so they've gone in there for a few hours. So it comes in handy, but just not as an incubator. Okay, well, next time we come back, um, we'll either be back for hatching um, or after they've hatched, one or the other, but we will be back for uh, part four in this series. If you've enjoyed uh, this video, give it a big thumbs up, hit subscribe so you don't miss out on any other of our videos. Um, and until next time, it's goodbye from Hilltop Farm. See ya.